For this next tutorial, we're going to be finishing up modules and then moving on to timers. There's one last interesting feature of modules, and that is implementing optional modules. So modules that may or may not exist. For example, if we had something, let's say, a struct, hello, extends array, and struct, we can then make it implement a module, like implement my module, and that will throw a syntax there right now. Enable find module. If we put the implement keyword in here, now the module may or may not exist. Oh, the optional keyword, my bad. The optional keyword, the module may or may not exist now, so it won't throw a syntax there anymore. And it works. And if we decide the, to add the module in, module, my module, and module, then it gets implemented. And we can even throw a syntax in, error in here to see that it was in fact implemented. Right here. Implemented. So optional modules for usually optional plugins for systems, that's what they're used for. And I didn't mention it before, but modules don't have to contain variables or methods or something. They can actually contain lines of code because they are actually meth macros. So if we had something like private static method on init takes nothing, returns nothing, and method, we can do something like call print hello world and then implement that module down here. Implement my module. And it will work. And we can even have multiple lines of code. So if we did A, there's the method, so on and it, and function, and there's the print and the A. So modules are literally just macros, and you can use them as such. They can only be implemented one time each, though. So just keep that in mind. You can't do like a implement my module again and then expect to see hello world two times. And we'll go ahead and put syntax there. there. And as we saw, it only got implemented one time. So, And it also shows the two comments for implementing from the module. But as you see, this one is completely empty. Now, moving on to timers. Timers are a wonderful thing in that they can run code after a certain period of time and continue to repeat that code and so on. We create timers using the timer variable type. And I'm going to work in this struct from now on. We don't really need, well, I guess we'll leave these up for later for when we go over triggers. Anyways, what we're going to do here is create another method. Private static method in it takes nothing, returns nothing, and method. And then over here we're going to start a timer using the timer start native. First we need to create a timer right there. Timer which timer? So create timer and it doesn't take anything, so that's that. Now, the timeout. How long before the timer expires? How about five seconds? Is it going to repeat? Let's say false. And the code handler function? How about function? And I'm going to use a thingy here because this is a method instead of a struct. This type, so this type instead of hello, dot init. And that should now run the function after five seconds. Then over here we're going to go call print hello world. Then we're going to destroy the timer. Where's the timer though? How do we get it? Well we use the native get expired timer and then we can retrieve the timer that expired just now. We're going to go ahead and save that. And we're destroying the timer because you should destroy a timer when you're done using it. If you just keep it there, it'll just take up memory and eventually your map will crash. So that's awesome. Destroy stuff when you're done using it. Just Don't just let it hang around. So we're going to go ahead and test that. Oh. Hasn't displayed yet. Wait for it. 
Oh, there it is. Hello, world. Just to Now we can make this repeat itself, changing that to true. Let's make that one second now. And we could even do something like plus R2S, real to string, timer get timeout. So there's another native. This retrieves the period of the timer, how often it expires. And then we're going to do get expired timer here. So that's the timer we're going to get the period of. Close all that up. And now this should display one second every time because let's make that 1.11. So hello world 1.11. There it is. Oh, and it only displayed once because we destroyed the timer now, didn't we? So let's comment that out. Try it again. And now it's repeating every 1.11 seconds. Timers can be used in a way to get the game time. So you could have, for example, a private static constant timer game time equal create timer. And then all you're doing here is doing call timer start game time. So now we have a timer to reference. And then let's give it a really big timeout, like one million seconds. Then we're going to say that it doesn't repeat, and it's not going to have a code handler. It's just going to be there to keep the time. And now over here, we'll say one second. And now we're going to do R2S timer get elapsed. So that's how much time is elapsed on the timer. And we're going to, instead of get expired time, we're going to show game time. Oh. So, game time. So just to see this again, this retrieves how much time is passed on the timer. There's also timer get remaining. That's how much time before the timer expires again. Here we go. And test map. Now every one second, two seconds, works beautifully. Now we know that this many seconds have gone by in the game. Now we can also pause and resume timers with the pause and timer and resume timer natives. However, keep in mind that this will break your repeating timers. Resume timer does resume with the proper timeout, but it will only resume at that one time it will not repeat anymore and doing a resume timer for a timer that's not repeating will just make it go over again with its timeout so if we try this let's say that we're not going to make a repeat and we're going to go call resume timer get expired timer this should be just like a repeating timer now because resume timer resumes it over again at its timeout remain timeout and when the timer expires, its remaining timeout goes back to the period over here. So we'll go ahead and run that, and it should work just like it did before. A little bit buggy, but interesting. So it the resume timer period is a little bit buggy there. It had like a 0 .063 seconds or something in there. So that's not really recommended. Plus this is slower than having the timer just repeat with this flag down here. And again, we can do like a pause timer, call pause timer, game time, and then this will just display one second over and over again. Then we can resume game time if we want, and it will just start back up again. There it goes. And it, oh, because we didn't have a repeat, did we? So let's repeat it. And right there, it's repeating. And it's showing that little bit of buggy thing, 1.063.
So this code actually took around 0 0.063 seconds to execute, now didn't it? We can also do some other interesting things with timers. Let's say we don't want to display a message. How about we have a timer window instead? Now there are some handles that cannot be displayed at the very start of initialization, which is why we s sometimes create a dummy timer here for zero seconds, false, and then create another init method and then destroy that dummy timer. This is just so that we we can create any handle we want, like a multi-board or something, since not all of those can be created at map initialization. So let's go ahead and create a timer dialog window. Local timer dialog. How about dialog? Or how about D? Timer dialog, I guess. Equal create timer dialog. And I'm again just winging it. But timer dialog is like a little window that shows the current time on the timer. Here we go. So uh, game time. That will work and then we're going to show it call timer dialog display timer dialog and we want true let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that so time remaining is 277 hours 46 minutes and 34 seconds so that's what that does And then we have some other options with timer dialogs. And normally, when you want to see all the options, you go type it in, search it up, and now we can go set speed, set title, color, not many options, I guess. Destroy timer di dialog. There are some strange things that can happen when you're messing with the speed on the timer dialog, so don't mess with the speed on the timer dialog. It's just, don't do that. Just keep it normal. Now, what if we want to show the current game time, though? Now we have to go into what's called a multi-board. Those are a little bit complicated, so we'll probably be using a, another resource for those, and we'll cover those later. Anyways, that concludes timers. So now you can go ahead and make your repeating timers and whatnot as much as you like.